Howdy folks, Kirk and family here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Today guys, I'm going to tell you everything I know about going over bricks. This is an interior fireplace. And these folks, they emailed me about a week ago and they said, Kirk, we were talking to a guy and we want to uh, plaster the fireplace and he said he was going to put Wonderboard over it. What do you think? I had, that was before I accepted the job, and I said, well, no, you can't do that. What you do is use the, use the natural brick and go over that. And besides, guys, how are you going to put Wonderboard on here and make it adhere? It can't be done, guys. It simply can't. They like this brick here. We have a number of things we're doing at this house, by the way. I'll show it to you. Now, this bricks, these bricks are, they're um, about one inch to three inch difference you say what the heck does that mean if you look up the bricks come out like say for example this one here this comes out three about two and a half inches so what you guys would have to do number one is you'd have to find a base coat material I'll tell you the best base coat material that's available um, and there's some issues with base coats these days, guys, but I'll get into that in a bit. Anyway, what we did is we cleaned the brick chimney. You got to clean it, guys, because nothing adheres to dust. Nothing. Maybe a cobweb. All right, what we got here? Then we put some corners on. We put some corners on, and you have to think, well, gee, how thick or how tight do we want to put these corners? I improvise, and we give them what we want. I say, what do you guys want? They say they want the, um, a base coat and then they want a lime finish a plaster lime finish the lime finishes we're going to do after we do the base coat how long will this base coat take me I'm not sure because it's winter time and the materials are old whether or not they're in my yard or uh, west side or anybody else's yard these materials get old so we're going to experiment to find the right accelerator for any any plaster it doesn't matter what plaster you use guys there's uh if for interiors on this particular one i'm going to use a product made by chemset and that product is echo plast 50. it's in from europe uh, europe they know their plasters it's for interior or exterior i just happen to have uh, some bags and i know one rep so he ships it over to me from europe there's a long way to go man for just material but it's it's the bomb. This stuff, it's kind of like struck the light, but on steroids. Now, struck the light is having some issues. I don't know what they are, so I can't get into that. Plus, I don't want to criticize any companies. But from my talking with my friends, uh, guys who've been 30, 40 years, I say, hey, Kirk, they got some problems right now. I'm not sure what it is. It's not even sold anymore until they figure out the problem. No idea. So we're going to switch to Chemset Echoplast. Now, I'll show you how to use that, and I'll show you what we got to do. First, I got to determine this, guys. If you're working inside, it's pouring rain outside like it has been. You touch the brick. Okay. Now, this is interior. So, I'm touching this brick right here, and I feel like about, it's, it's warm, cold in some spots. So, when I put the first coat on, we have to detect, we have to get a formula. How much accelerator to put into our material. Since I'm using a, a lime plaster, um, it's basically uh, Echoplast. We're going to take a walk outside and show you, but first I want to explain this too. You don't need to put Wonderboard. You can't, guys. If somebody says that, call somebody else because they don't know what they're doing. Do you need to put wire over this? Stucco netting or 3.4 mesh or diamond? No. Why? Because that will do more damage than good. It, it, it doesn't... It, um, adhere the plaster it hinders the plaster so you got to figure out is this painted or is this porous all right guys we're in another room a dining room here's how you know if it's painted or porous okay you see how that darkens just like a brick if you wet a brick it'll darken that way that's the strongest adherence you can go that's called a mechanical bond it beats any of these uh so-called bonding agents these are great bonding agents like quick read and uh, plaster well but this is going to be a stronger absorption. It's going to last a thousand years. It won't come off. You know, I was telling the boys earlier, I said, man, uh, make sure I got a good clean hawk and you guys got a good clean hawk because I'll be doing one. Jason will be doing the other or Carl or Dan. Now, this, this hawk, it's kind of beat up. But I was, for me, I like to like find the center, 
find the center. And if it's all warped or crooked, it won't do this. You gotta have a straight one. I want it to sound like a helicopter. Like you've been in Vietnam, okay. Wing tool. Now guys, that's a, that's a perfectly clean hawk. Okay. I'm just messing around now, guys. Why? Because I can. We used to do this stuff when I was working union. Okay, quit messing around, Kirk, and playing around and get busy. I'm going to take you guys outside. I'm going to show you the material we're using and why. I'll show you our setup, guys. All right. Me, I like a lot of buckets, three or four filled with water. We take a, a, uh, a pot, a pan, or any kind of gauge to figure out how much water you need in all of these. So this particular bag here, and then guess what, guys? This is kind of lightweight. It's lightweight. Uh, Chemset. Chemset, uh, Echoplast, again, from Europe. Now, Carl mixed uh, about four or five buckets. This is how light this stuff is. These are to the top. And I can't curl full buckets. That's lightweight stuff. This has got perlite, lime. Perlite is used for gardening. Uh, vermiculite is very light. It's got volcanic glass. It's got so many good properties as far as fire retardants, um, uh, soundproofing, you name it. It doesn't have any lye in it though. So if it gets on your skin, it won't burn. What's lye do? It'll burn a hole through your head. It'll burn a hole through a floor. So anyway, this is lye free. It's good stuff. It's going to come to uh, U.S. soon. They're working on it. But anyway, that's another story. Anyway, I'm gonna, these guys, we're going to figure out our accelerator. And why don't I already know that? Because this, I don't know how long these bags have been setting. The accelerator, say like luminite for exterior, or say like uh, calcium, uh, what is that, sulfate? Formate. Uh, well, there's formate too, calcium formate. It gets old, guys. If it's in the material yard, sitting on the shelf, you can use like, say, one scoop per bucket like this. When it gets old, you might have to use three scoops. You might have to use four. And what I want is, I want the material. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to practice. So I tell Carl or Dan or Jay, whoever's mixing, Dan's filming, he's going to be, pla or Jay's filming, he's going to be plastering with me. We're going to take some of this uh, calcium formate and we're going to figure out the right amount. So we're going to first put two in here. And when they bring it to me, and if I'm hustling and it dries into that wall, just, then we're going to use less. If it doesn't dry, I'm going to use more. That's as simple as it is, guys. Anyway, I learned all about that with old man Whitey, but that's another story. I'll get into that later. These guys are going to add a couple scoops of this uh, calcium formate. And that is what they recommend. The engineers said, Kirk, use calcium formate. And uh, I'll get into that another time because Kirk is not a scientist. I'm a stucco guy. So whatever they say, we use. There's a whole bunch of accelerators, but we'll get into that later. All right, guys. I'll show you how you experiment with the material. Now, if you homeowners are doing this, you can just do a base coat and stop and come back another day or a week to do a finish coat. But we are doing base and finish on two, on two different fireplaces, plus surrounds and other things. And it's not the fact that I'm an hour and a half from my house. It's the fact that we do things just same day. It makes them stronger. Anyway, so what I have here is I have some of the Echoplast and we've tried, we're trying uh, two scoops of um, calcium formate. You guys, there's a lot of different materials to use. And I'm just experimenting here, guys. I'm looking at how fast it sucks up with the interior here, the heater on and all that jazz. Okay, so I'm putting it on. And this is just, this is just to uh, give myself uh, an idea of what we're doing. And we are going very, very thick, guys. So, right there, that's about, oh, some of this grout is inch, inch and a half, and some of the bricks are two to three inches. So I can go through a bucket quite easy. And when you're doing this kind of stuff, guys, it's, um, it's not like rod work 
where you got to have a wall completely true and level. Uh, this is not going to get tile put over it. And the finish they want is old world. And that just means give it some, some uh, character. That's a good word. We're giving it some character. It's not going to be super true, super plumb, but it'll be off within, say, a, about a quarter inch, perhaps even uh, a half in some areas. Now I'm looking at this right here. This is just one bucket. That's about almost done. But what that does is I'm going to finish this bucket. Then we're going to take, uh, take a break because we've been here a long time setting up. And right now I'm just embedding this corner aid. I want to embed that before we take a break. And then I come back after break, which is like a 10 minute break. And then that I'll be able to touch this and find out uh, just if I have my formula uh, right. So boom, boom. You can see it's just loose. Anyhow, so we're going to give it 10 minutes. I'm going to put a little bit more on because I think just from practice that this is going to be about right. So we'll see you in a minute. All right, guys, I'm killing time, just messing around, waiting on them boys to bring me some mud. About time. Okay, we figured out our formula. Now, I could tell you our formula, but it's not going to work for you because it's it's for this particular day. So this particular day and this particular job, every job is different because like food, this stuff gets old. Anyway, come on, quit messing around. This is what they had a TV hung over there. So we're going to get rid of that nail and get back busy. Here's what I was doing now, guys. I put this on. It's been about five minutes. Now I'm, I can feel it here. Kirk's the best. <laughs> that gives me an indication of how, how fast this is setting. And I need an indication to know how fast it's setting. Okay, so they just brought me this one. And this is an improvised uh, bucket of mud. Now I'm looking at it and I thought, wow, they just mixed this. So, ooh, they're going to make me hustle. That's good. I like moving fast. I'm kind of using the mud to hold these corners down too, guys. So what I'll do is I'll kind of, I'll do like this. I'm embedding the corners, guys. Embed that corner. I'm just embedding it, guys. At the same time, I'm applying a lot of mud. I figure this chimney right here will take about 15 buckets. Big deal. I can spread that. So, now again, I want to embed these corners. So not only do they have concrete nails, but now they have the mud holding them. And when this is solid, it's ready. Now these people are talking about an insert. They're getting rid of the, the fireplace here and they're going to do an insert. Anyway guys, I'll tell you about, a little bit about accelerators. Um, I used to work about 40 years, 30 years ago, 30, 40, with a fella called Whitey, old man Whitey. And we were do all the piers in San Francisco. Remember how in the old days they were train stations and then with... Uh, the prices and everything going way up, uh, they turn them into restaurants. Well, I go hard care for old man Whitey. I was about 20, 23, 25. Uh, and he, he said, Kirk, bring me some mud, but I need some stiff mud. Put accelerators in it. And if we didn't have the particular accelerator, I, I remember going back and saying, Whitey, we don't have that uh, anymore, that accelerator. And he'd say, boy, open a bag of Portland. And I said, won't that change the color? Won't that mess it up? He said, no. All these accelerators work. They're preferred accelerators. Now, I go by with old man Watt, he said, because he was a 50-year plaster. And kind of at the end of his, uh, <laughs> he was getting ready to retire. But anyway, uh, he and I used to go do jobs. I remember we did Lawrence Livermore Lab. Jay on camera right now is about two years old uh, to work at Lawrence Livermore. Oh, they checked, they did background checks. I remember being there and coming home and my neighbor saying, hey, Kirk, 
the police are looking for you. And I thought, oh, crap. I didn't do nothing that warranty that. And it turned out they were detectives working for the lab. They'd check on you to make sure that you're not a criminal or a thug if, if you're coming to their property to work. And what we did is we did a Star Wars program where there was a long cord, then it was like a movie theater, and we were plastering it. It was kind of round. I guess they were going to shoot it with lasers. But anyway, oh man, why did he say, Kerr? Uh, accelerators and are, you can use the right one, you could use almost all of them. Getting back to my story about these. Uh, police officers come into my house. Well, they weren't police, they were detectives making sure that Lawrence is not hiring screw-ups. I remember coming home and my neighbor telling me, well, Kirk, uh, the detectives were here, and I thought, oh man, what'd you tell them? <laughs> I was trying to keep a job. I had uh, bills to pay and all that. He said, they asked questions. I just, I just told them, I answered their questions. You ever have that happen, guys? Right away I was thinking, oh man, what did I do in my past? And I thought, yeah, I stole a bike once. And then I went way back in my past. Just, this was a temporary thing. I thought, man, I remember when, uh, anywhere, Dan, you can take that one. I remember when I was like 12. This has got nothing to do with what I'm doing right here, guys. I'm just talking because I can do this stuff blindfolded. I need to kill some time. Anyway, my brother had a, when the detectives came inquiring about my past, again, Jay was young. This is like 35 years ago. First thing that goes through my mind is, oh man, what I do wrong? And I thought of some goofy stuff I did when I was a kid. Like my brother had a, a GTO. And I remember showing my buddy, he was selling in a car lot. And I told my buddy, hey, you want to see a, a GTO with a speedometer that says 160 and he says I thought they only go to 120 and I said I thought so too so I was about 12 and I was showing it to him we we're in the car I was at a car lot for sale this is kind of <laughs> this is kind of thoughts that go to your head when a detective's looking for you. you think of old stuff that don't amount to nothing so I'm showing my buddy this car and all of, the next thing I know I feel somebody grab me and throw me on the floor and kick me. It was the owner of the car lot. He said, get out of here. And I thought, wow, that's some rude stuff. I said, that's my brother's. He didn't care, just kicked me again. And so later that night, my buddy and I went back, I was like 13, and took some bricks. Well, let's just say all the cars in the, close to my brother's car had damaged windshields. But that's the kind of stuff that goes through your head that if ever you're questioned by a detective, you, you think of all kind of weird stuff, even stuff that you did when you were young, think, what are they looking for me for? Anyway, um, it's looking good. This right here is hardening, and that's exactly what I want. We're fast, so I want it to harden quick. Now, Jay is going to probably stop that camera. And Dan and Carl are bringing mud in here. They got a good system. So they're going to be feeding both of us. So the next time you see me, I will have uh, probably almost finished this because I wanted to set again because we're going to do another finish over this. And all these interior finishes, guys, here's a tip. This is the biggest tip I can give you. Uh, Wet your trowel. Okay, this is sticky, gluey. All these are sticky and gluey. Here's what you do. If I, if I pull this up, see that? It's gonna drag. It's gonna revive the scratch coat. And we're two to three inches in some areas. So you gotta wet your trowel. I like to clean the back too. I don't like a bunch of slobbers all over my tools. Now with a wet trowel, it'll go smooth slick. Every time I run this on this now, this is finished. I gotta put this wet, otherwise it'll drag. That's just like with tape and mud. It's just like with any plaster. I, it'll drag. See that? Wipe it. But if I didn't do that, what'll happen? Well, let's, I'll show you. You see how it's dragging? It's opening it. That opens it because the trowel is dry and it's pulling the middle and the bottom off. We don't want that, guys. 
Anyway, uh, I'm going to finish this whole thing off, tie it all in. And when I'm finishing it, just for the sake of putting the next, um, the finish coat on, I'll show you that too. All right, guys, we're going to show you how to do the lime finish now. This, all we did was we just uh, hard steel troweled this, and that set it. And it's ready to go, but it's poor lighted in here. We didn't anticipate. We don't always bring a floodlight, guys. In fact, we rarely do. Anyway, I'm going to walk you to the other one. All right, guys, we're over here where I could actually, and Jay can see what we're doing. Right here, this butter or whipping cream. This is a lime finish, guys. It's, it's just lime. Um, so what I'm going to do now is we still troweled all this. You still trowel it to push all the grit down, the sand and stuff. And J Dan, a minute ago, asked me a pretty good question. He said, Dad, well, why, did, why are we doing this instead of just an exterior scratch and brown? I thought, good question. But the reason is this flexes. This is lime. Lime is what they've been using in Europe for, oh, shoot, uh, forever. The Great Wall of China, lime. Uh, the gladiator statements, churches, uh, lime. And lime flexes, where if I just use an exterior finish here, like say, any of what number of the finishes you see us using exterior, like, ah, uh, let's see, you got Rapid Set, we got Portland Cement, we got Sack Creek, Quick Crete, we got every kind of Crete there is. But those, those are strong, but they have a lot of uh, Portland cement. Portland cement has a tendency not to flex at all. Uh, it just will crack. So now what we're doing is we're giving them a natural lime finish. And they said, hey, Kirk, can you make it kind of varied? And I thought, absolutely. That just means varied in color. So it's not one solid color. And what I'm going to do is put it on a little bit thicker. So I put it on an eighth of an inch or a little bit thicker than that. I'm getting all my corners and we just go back over it. Um, all right. Take some more of this diamond, imperial, lime mud. And basically, um, you put it on, wax on, wax off. And if you want variations, guys, all you got to do is go back over it. You don't have to look. Just variations. Go back over it. <laughs> These folks sent me a picture. They said, Kirk, can you match this? I thought, absolutely. That was somebody who did a bedroom and a whole bunch of stuff. And the owner, she says, that's my sister. She watched your videos to learn how to do that. And I thought, so, I'm matching my own work? I can do that. So here, I've just taken it off the top here. Taking it off the top. And I'm putting it a little bit thick, guys. Uh, you can go, I mean, this is supposed to be a 30 seconds. My... I can go like a quarter inch, eighth of an inch. As long as I keep going over it and playing with it, I can bring it back to life. So I'm just going to hit this area here. And we're going to call it a day. But I want to at least show you this part here. Because this will get out any imperfections that might be in the other coat. And if you guys buy this stuff and it says only go... A sixteenth of an inch thick. Disregard that, guys. You go as fat as, as fat as you want it. As much fat. This is uh, uh, diamond. And again, I often use Imperial too, but Imperial doesn't have as much fat. That just means you can't. It doesn't have as much lime. You can't play with it a lot. Sets up. I want to play with this and. Uh, Give it the variations of color, and that does happen. The more you mess with it, you trial it down. So, let me see. For the sake of finishing up this, get this out my own way. Blam. All right. Uh, 
Okay, now that's, that's kind of jacked up, right? Can you, you see all those lines? And I mean, I can play with it, make it a skip chop finish. I can make it ugly, but I'm going to smooth that out. First thing I'm going to do is finish up this side. Get my corners. I want to put the corners on kind of thick so that the corner aid doesn't show. That's no problem to do that. Come around. Okay. Always remember, guys, go a little bit thicker than what the... I mean, that 30 seconds of an inch, that's pretty, pretty thin, guys. But that's what the bag says. Okay, now, here's what I'll do. Because I'm using a big Congo trowel, uh, it's easy for me to go and straighten this out. And I could use water, too, guys, if I take a, a brush. Where's my brush? Okay. Uh, kind of a nasty $2 brush, but they work the best, guys. Okay, a, a brush. <laughs> I got a whole box of these on the truck, but this one's handy. You take this brush, and you just hit your ceiling. Just get that tip in there. Now, it, just take it down. Advantage this uh, swimming pool trial. It's called a pull, P-O-O-L, not P-U-L, is you come down. Okay. It won't leave, if your wall is kind of straight, it won't leave a bunch of trial marks. So, now, all I'm doing, guys, is I can play with this for an hour, meaning to get the lines out. I just go over it, go over it, and I can wet it and bring it right back to life. What does that mean? Okay, here I get my corner, and I just use the, the side of this little cheap brush, and blam. And remember, they want variations of color. Uh, all I got to do is play with it a little bit. And where I see that the base coat, that when this dries, it'll be sort of very varied in color. Now, how are we going to be here that long? That I don't know. All right. The more you play with it, the more variations in color. And they do want an old world charm look. A lot of color. They said. As much variations as I can give them. I thought, no problem, we can do that. And that's it, guys. You just go over it. Now, if you use a square trial, it'll be much harder to get your, your lines out. But these, these round trials work really well, guys. Anyway, I'm going to play with this and give it some uh, more detail. And here's another tip, last tip, guys. If you put it on and you say, man, I don't like that finish, you can put another finish right over it. It didn't take me that long to do that. And that's, that's a wall that is uh, kind of sandy and everything else. I just put it on a little thick. All right, guys, there you have it. Kind of a shiny look, but that's when you put a lot of it on it and you trowel it and trowel it and trowel it. It gives a little bit of a sheen. We're going to take you to the other side. It's 7 o'clock now. We start at 7 in the morning. Daylight savings time. Ah, it kind of sucks. Uh, but it is what it is. Let's show you the other. And here's this one also. It's kind of like uh, glass. And how you get that is you just put it on extra heavy, like an eighth to a quarter. But when you do that, then you've really got to elbow grease it, a lot of water, elbow grease it, and it gives it that sheen. Anyway, my name is Kirk. Jason on the camera, we thank you guys for watching. And as usual, we'll see you guys on the next one. All right, folks, as always, we want to say thank you for watching. If you like what we put out, please like and subscribe, and we'll keep making content for you. And as usual, we'll, we'll see, see you on the next one. one.